Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and Plus TV Africa, the uh, Nigerian House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating all subsidy payments the nation has made between 2013 and 2022. Uh, yesterday summoned the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, to appear before it. With all records of subsidy payments the federal government has made within the period under review. Now, committee chairman Ibrahim Aliu issued the summons when the director of home finance in the ministry, this federal ministry of finance, appeared before the committee. The minister said that, uh, the chairman rather said the minister ought to furnish the committee with details of all public funds used for subsidy payments on failingly on the 16th of August 2000. And 22, and the lawmaker who insisted that the investigation was not aimed at witch hunting anybody said, quote, This committee requested from you to know the total amount released from the consolidated revenue account as subsidy payments from January 2013 to date. Um, so, what exactly is this, or where exactly is this headed um, as far as the probe? is concerned. We have joining us this morning to provide analysis of this, a public affairs analyst, Ambrose Igboke, who joins us via Zoom from Enugu. Uh, good morning to you, Ambrose Igboke. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, wh wh why is the, the National Assembly, in particular the House of Representatives, interested in, in knowing what exactly has been going on as far as subsidy payments are concerned? Uh, before I answer that directly, I would like to lay a background. What is subsidy? Subsidy in the petroleum sector simply means that the government has failed to refine crude oil in Nigeria. Therefore, they take our crude oil for the past 30 years, take it to outside the cultures of this country, pay refineries over there in other countries, they create employment for other people and then re-import the fuel as refined products. Because of the foreign exchange between what Nigeria should buy the local product that they re-imported and what is going on in the international market, the federal government says that Nigerians are not supposed to be paying uh, buying uh, uh, petroleum products with international market price because it was the government that failed the people. So the subsidy was now supposed to subsidize the people who are importing, the companies that are importing the oil, so that there can be a kind of parity between what Nigerians are paying and what is uh, obtainable in international markets, so that the importers will not lose. That was what subsidy is supposed to do for us as a country, so that we can buy fuel cheaply at the end use uh, point. But over the years, what has been happening was that there have been a lot of scam associated with fuel subsidy. Uh, during the past, I just said between 1999 to 2007, he brought up the issue of the regulation. But how can you deregulate the sector when local refineries are not working? Therefore, the deregulation failed. Then, so after some time, they were able to uh, uh, get the regulation from uh, at the diesel level, but at the petrol level, it, it, it still remains, uh, it was not able to deregulate. Because you cannot deregulate when local refineries are not functioning. So what has now happened that the subsequent governments have used their cronies, pay subsidy to cronies who don't, some of them don't even bring, don't even import uh, petroleum products. So they pay their cronies and then they share this money most of the time. So for over some time now, they, they, are, they are not relieving the, uh, the uh, subsidy in the real sense of it. So in 2014, one of the campaign themes of the APC was that subsidy was a scam and that they were going to stop subsidy when, they, when it comes into power. Seven years down the line, that has not happened. And then that shows that there is something opaque about subsidy. Now, let's go to the House of Reps. The House of Reps has shown itself as a committee that always backs 
but cannot bite. It has also shown itself that most of the time, when it tries to solve issues like this, it gets it more complicated. Let's talk of the issue of the IPP, uh, NIP, National Integrated Power Project, that the House of Press at one time, uh, uh, you know, interrogated and investigated. It ended up in scam. So many other things like that. So the House of Press has not really, really redeemed itself before the Nigerian citizens. Therefore, they are disrespected by uh, the people they invite. So uh, I would hear the minister did not come. Uh, they have also invited some other agencies of government that did not come. Because at the back scene, things happen. And people are not comfortable appearing before them. So they should clean up their house first. Restore their integrity and make sure that they are believable and they are well respected. That is why only people will respect them. So what is happening now is another charade by both the House of Reps and the Ministry. The subsidy regime in Nigeria is shrouded in secrecy and is highly complicated. But so this is another show to distract Nigerians. It's not going to come out in any way positive. Well, uh, you, you have you have said that you know uh, the lawmakers have lost their respect and. Maybe to them, this is also another way to gain uh, some kind of respect. But looking at, you know, the subsidy query that's been put out, uh, let's look at it as it is. January 2013 to date, that's 2022. Do you think that this is even possible in terms of record keeping and transparency in the system? Is it possible, uh, you know, for the Minister of Finance to have all of these records or the Ministry, however, to have all of these records very handy? We are not running the banana republic. We are running the federal republic of Nigeria. And there are structures, organs, ministries, departments, and agencies that run this country for us. We should have records of 1960-something with us. We should write records of the 70s, 80s, 90s. So the Ministry of Finance should have the records. Because the Ministry of Finance has been a continuum since Nigeria got independence. So the records should be there. And anybody who says cannot provide the records has a question to answer. But the House of Reps should not even go this way by inviting people, telling them to provide the receipts and the rest. They should go in partnership with the judiciary and issue some kind of judicial pronouncement to ensure or even uh, employ some forensic, uh, financial forensic experts to prove and ferret out all this information they're asking for. So that they can have a, a detailed report, forensic report, audit report of the ministry. So that when the minister or the ministry is coming to, uh, to the house, they have questions to ask and they have answers to provide. But these things you just do for the show, for media, you just announce, come, show us receipts. They throw some banters, they throw some arguments. Well, we have seen it all over many times. And then they, they go, you suddenly die, the silent mode, nobody hears anything again. That is not how to run the country. So the House of Press should spare us this uh, drama. If they are really serious about it, there are audit firms, there are accounting firms, both local and international, that can do a, a, a financial forensic uh, analysis of what has happened from that day, 2013 to now. Okay, so but and if they cannot get it done, they should get the judiciary to do a pronouncement on it and, and set up a forensic panel to do that. Beyond the subsidy query, uh, don't you do, do you think that you know the Minister of uh, Petroleum should also answer some questions as regard the activities that's going on in the ministry? Well, first of all, I think the House of Reps is concerned about the financial aspect of it. It is left for the ministry to now say, oh, the the the, petrol, the petroleum uh, the uh, ministry ensures that the crude is uh, allocated, ensures that, this, uh, that uh, our alliance or joint venture um, business with the international oil corporations are going on well, ensure that we meet our OPEC quota, and ensure that uh, we do the business. But people who collect the money are supposed to be the finance ministry, and if they have not been doing that, they should also raise some alarm. So it, it, it is when the ministry says that the 
ministry, Minister of Finance, if they complain that the Minister of Petroleum, uh, uh, Minister of Petroleum Resources has not done their own part, that is where they cannot be invited. But for now, they are interested in how much has been remitted or how, how much has been paid out as subsidy between this year, 2013 till now, and what are we, uh, that is almost uh, like uh, nine years. What are, we, what are the uh, agreeable inflows? How did you spend it? What were the outflows? I think that's what they are interested in for now. And I think from there, if the petroleum the ministry have the question to answer, uh, they can now call them in. But, but you're saying that that should be dependent on, you know, the report or concerns of the ministry. And so one would be, ex would be saying, is it possible that the ministry would like to report their shortcomings or their shortfall as it is? We constantly have had that, you know, OPEC has constantly said that we have not been able to meet our quota every other time. And so uh, where's the oversight function? Should we wait for the ministry uh, to invite the minister or to complain before the minister has been summoned? Who is the president? Should, should we vote? Should the House of Friends even invite the, uh, the, 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 the first point of call is not to invite the minister, either of Ministry of Finance or Ministry of uh, 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 Petroleum? They are supposed to, first of all, do what we call some investigation. I mean, this is what uh, if, you watch, if you watch the House of, uh, if you watch the Senate in the United States or, or, Brit or House of Lords or whatever in the British, uh, just uh, grill their ministers. You will see that these people have done some work. We have to do some background work. We have to dig out some certain information. We need to know everything, first of all, from the ministry. What this transaction they're asking for from 2013 to, uh, to now, the House of Arrests are supposed to have had it from independent sources. And that's why I talk about all the, the, the forensic audit, all financial experts. I let them, first of all, do their work, present the report. When you are not armed with that report, it's why when you now come and invite the Minister of uh, Finance to ask her questions on issues, and then you invite the Minister on the Petroleum. But now, you want to be dependent on the evidence that the Minister of Finance will be giving you. Do you expect the Minister of Finance to in that case? Eh? So that's, that's what I say, that it's not, it's not serious, it's, it's just a show again. And I think we are tired of this kind of shows. There have been, um, you know, questions about Nigeria's uh, daily petrol consumption. I mean, if you look at uh, the figures from April 2022, uh, it was as high as 74 million liters um, per day. If we go to 2021, uh, it had a record high of 93 million liters per day. Uh, do you suspect, uh, sir, that we have... Uh, some sort of hanky-panky going on that the figures are not correct or there is some sort of a discrepancy. Because I remember uh, when the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria some, some time last year, uh, you know, attempted to remove or scrap the petrol subsidy and there were, you know, protests or attempted protests, you know, people against it in the media. Um, before it was suspended for 18 months, the Senate President went, Ahmed Lawan went to visit Mr. Buhari at Asuvila, have had a meeting with him, came out, spoke to the press and said that uh, he is not sure we spend that amount of uh, 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 you know, fuel in a day, 93 million uh, as of last year. Um, do you suspect that these figures may not be correct? Well, there have been uh, some city investigations in the past where some companies were indicted. What has happened to those companies? There are individuals that have been indicted with subsidies kind of this same National Assembly proved it. What has become of that? So that is what we are talking about. The government already knows that there are issues in terms of correct data in the petroleum se uh, sector. And that is why the petroleum industry bill that have been forced to uh, remedy the situation. But it has not been working. Because nobody has made a scapegoat of it. So if we keep on doing the same thing, we don't expect different results. What we have had over years, and then the issue of also above bunkering, we are doing so much output, but is it coming to the government coffers? What are we, what's even the exploration of oil itself? How much is being declared? 
Does the government even know um, um, what actual amount of petroleum uh, petrol products we get? So these things, it, because there are there is there is a lot of corruption with them. So these things happen. Hmm. And until we really wake up as a country as well, we this time around, we remain business. And let it be clear that petroleum, the total deregulation of the sector, cannot work if there are no local refineries working. It doesn't add up. There's something I, an economist can tell me that it, it's simple uh, economics. Simple. Refine your product locally. Is there, is, then you can deregulate the sector. Yeah, is there, is there some element of fright in, in what's going on as well? Um, uh, I would like to speak to the, the role of the NMPC in all of this, you know, the NMPC in all of this, because, of course, when the president said, okay, we're not, we're not going to scrap the, the uh, subsidy as planned, rather we'll continue to extend for 18 months, Mele Carey, the then uh, group managing director of NMPC, which is now NMPC Limited, so it's a CEO, went to the president with a bill and said, this is how much it's going to cost you for us to, to get the petrol uh, on a subsidized rate. So what is the NMPC's role in all of this? Because there's a lot shrouded in secrecy. That's number one. Number two, um, you know, what can you say about the fact that Nigeria's petrol subsidy in the past six months uh, to July 2022 has surpassed NNPC's oil revenue by 210 billion naira? Well, the oil, it, 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 that shows something is wrong somewhere. Because you are subsidizing the petroleum, the volume of petroleum that you are bringing out. So how can the cost of what you brought out be more than uh, cost of what you are using to subsidize what you brought out more than the cost of what you brought out? That's just something is happening. And I want to make something very clear. The federal government of Nigeria is not a limited liability company and it's not a capitalist venture. The primary responsibility of the federal government of Nigeria is security of life and citizens and welfare of the citizens. Therefore, anything the government is doing in welfare of the citizens is considered first and foremost. And in petroleum, for capitalists are taking over the sector and are trying to force the government to do the regulation of what the sector and scrap subsidy. That is good economics. Before you start subsidy, there are some certain things you must put in place. So subsidy is not the problem. All over the world, the biggest economies of the world subsidize their citizens. Americans think they subsidize a lot in their farmers, in technology. In fact, there is, there is a trade war always going on between America and China in terms of international trade in subsidies they give to their citizens, their businessmen. Now, these are countries that are doing well. So why would you not come here to tell us that the natural resources we have as a people, we are paid to refine it, it is the duty of government to refine it locally, and then you say, fail to refine it, and the same government says they want to remove subsidy. It cannot happen. Let them fix the refineries or the regulated sector, make it business friendly so that individuals can come and invest in private refineries. When we are now refining locally, the cost will come down, and then nobody will be talking about subsidy. So it is a subsidy is, is a symptomatic treatment. It's not a root cause treatment. The root cause when you have private people fix the barrier, let the modular economy work. And then when we the barrier to be working, then nobody will talk about subsidy with that natural death. But that you or you take it out to refine and bring it and you're talking about removing subsidy with our field. No, it's, it's well, well just, just, just you know, before we uh, call it a wrap about, down. What we talk about is let the government manage the subsidy in a transparent and accountable manner. Because all over the world, government subsidize. Mm. But the quickly, difference here is that it's not managed with uh, with accountability. Well, uh, the refineries is still government to look for a way to manage the panel with a level of accountability. Ambrose, uh, let's quickly look at this. Uh, you had mentioned, because I have been very concerned about 
2013 to 2022. That's not because it's impossible to have all of these records, but we understand, you know, the climate that we're in, and every other time you hear that there might just be a fire incident and what have you. But uh, following all of this investigation that's going on, the CSC is also telling the reps that uh, they have no records of 23 oil companies following this investigation. So uh, they have said to the reps that they have no records of 23 oil companies uh, you know, that all of this transaction have gone to. And I'm asking, how viable is this? And you say that it's possible that we don't live in the Banana Republic, who are in 21st century, and of course this is Nigeria, we should have records. Uh, what do you make of all of this? And do you think that this, this is even going to be a thing is it going to be real? Is there anywhere that there's a record somewhere? Well, I, I think the House of Reps, even if uh, since the Corporate Affairs Commission said they don't have, there should be a bunch of uh, bunch warrants and arrest those people stopping those uh, kind of statements. Why would they tell us? Are the companies not registered? Are they saying the companies that are transacting in such huge amounts for what they're not registered? Do we mean that? And not be paying tax, good company tax, and then be like that. So that is a story for uh, for children. That's so usually arrest whoever is saying that kind of statement, maybe the head of the uh, of CAC, and they will, they will, they will bring the result. Arrest the directors of, the, of such companies, they have records. So please, let's not fool ourselves about this. These are drama, dramatic statements. Mm. Uh, 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 let's not uh, enjoy the fool. Well, we have uh, we have to thank uh, House of Reps Member Sergio Sogu of the PDP Edo State uh, for raising this motion, moving this motion to investigate subsidy payments by NMPC. Some of the facts and the the figures he put out are quite 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 scary and damning if they are proven true. It means uh, you know we we, we have uh, about ten billion dollars of the nation's oil, oil revenue being flowing into private pockets. We'll see how this pans out. Uh, Ambrose Iboke, thank you very much. Uh, for your time this morning. Well, that's the size of our Thank house. you for having me. Well, thank right. you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you uh, for being part of the show. That's the size of it this morning on our first conversation. When we return, it will be time for us to be looking at, uh, you know, Ponta scheme and the fact that stakeholders are warning Nigerians against all of these uh, institutions that have disguised themselves. Please stay with us. <laughs>